Before we get to our next example, um, we got some terms that you need to know. Uh, these terms in this section are not going to be covered on the test, meaning I won't be asking you to define uh, closing costs, for example. However, later on when we hit chapter four, uh, there's a bunch of words there, so you have to know what those are. Uh, but let's go through all these. As it says, our closing costs are fees and expenses over and above the price of the property paid by the buyer or the seller of the transfer of the property. Um, so if you ever heard me say in class or in these videos, in closing, at the time of closing, that's what this is. So you basically meet in a public place so you don't cry too much like I did. And you hand over a check if you are the person buy, uh, paying for the closing costs. And this covers like your lawyer fees, your sewer die tests, uh, depending on who you are, the buyer or the seller. Um, if any real estate agent fees, uh, paperwork fees that might be associated, um, land survey fees, meaning you are paying to make sure that the property that you're getting can be sold and is owned by the person selling it, sort of scary. Uh, and they're not saying, like, they might have said to you that, oh, your property goes to that tree, but it actually might go a foot closer or clo a foot away. That all needs to be figured out because if you put a fence up and it's on someone else's property, uh, you have to pay to then take it down. Um, or you pay that person for their property. It's a, it's a big hoopla. So uh, all that information is very, very important. You also uh, write your name like 40 times. Uh, during the time of closing, uh, but you get to keep the pen, so bonus. Oh, you get a house, I guess. Next up is house inspection, as it as you might you might already know what this is. Uh, someone walks around with you and tells you what's wrong with your house. Now, uh, for the, our area in Northeast Ohio, it's about two to four hundred dollars per house. Keyword there, per, meaning if you narrow it down to six houses and you're going to inspect them all, then there's like you know, $2,000 worth of inspections, and that's insane. So try to narrow it down to a, one or two houses to do an inspection. The home inspector will not tell you to buy the house or not buy the house. That's not their job. Their job is just to prepare you for what it, uh, is wrong with the house. Um, and then that also can affect closing costs. For instance, if you have a list of 10 things that in your mind are absolutely needed to be repaired before you bought the house. You can tell the seller, I need you to repair these 10 things or you pay closing costs. And I forgot to mention, closing costs are expensive. They're like five, $6,000, uh, again, depending on the area in the house. Um, and also if you have um, real estate agents and whatnot, because they have to be paid too. So um, be careful with the home inspection. I would def definitely recommend that you ask around word of mouth of who friends and family have used and if they like them, and then just go that way. Uh, next up is sewer tests. Uh, a dye is put into the sewer to ensure that the dirty water flows to the correct place, um, meaning that uh, they don't want clean water going where the uh, where the processed water is going to go and the uh, dirty water from your house, like your toilet, to go to where the clean water is going to go because that's, that's bad. Um, this is done by the city, I'm pretty sure. It's usually the seller who pays for this one, um, but that's the whole purpose of the test. The reason I even have it in there is because years ago my basement backed up and I was, I didn't understand because it passed the sewer test, so why would it back up? And it was because that's not what the sewer test is for. Um, as it turned out, there was a crack in the pipe from my house to the uh, city's uh, sewage pipes. If the, cr and the crack was one foot before the sidewalk, and before meaning on my side of the house, not the tree lawn. Uh, tree lawn is, is a Cleveland word, a uh, parkway for everyone else if you're watching from Chicago. Anywho, if that crack had been under the sidewalk or under the tree lawn, I would not have to have paid. Because the crack was on my side, on my property, that was um, a sad time. 
because that was a lot of money because I had to get that all dug out and replaced. Um, so what are you going to do? So if you ever hear the phrasing, the joys of home ownership, that's exactly what that means. Next up, property taxes. Uh, these range from city to city. Any city services, uh, uh, cops, fire, libraries, school systems. Um, oh my gosh. What, so anytime you're anything you're voting for on election day or um, the primary days or whatever, um, and you have the levies and you might see yards uh, uh, yard signs saying vote for this, vote for that. This won't increase your taxes, yada, yada. That affects the property taxes. Um, it could be 2000 or more per year for our area. For the very nicer areas, you're talking four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 per year. Um, and uh, I'll get to the, I was gonna, I'm gonna bring up the escrow part too, money held by a third party. Because what sometimes happens is when you go to buy a house, they put, they say, oh, okay, well, you pay, I'm just going to make it a number easier so it's uh, better. You pay $2,400 for your property taxes, which means that you pay uh, $200 per month. So what they might say is, okay, your mortgage is $600. Also give us an extra $200. So you're paying $800 for your house, but that includes your property taxes. So when you have to pay your property taxes officially, which happens um, every six months, um, then we'll put the bank will put the money uh, on your property taxes so you don't have to worry about it. Well, the problem is is that as I said, property taxes are paid every six months or twelve months if you pay for a full year, and the bank collects your money every month. Well, what do you think the bank does with that money that it's sitting there waiting to be used to er uh, to pay your property taxes? If you said they're investing it and keeping the interest, you're correct. Uh, so it's sort of a scam, unfortunately. What you should be doing, if your bank allows it, is try to avoid escrow at all costs, because that's what that's called. They're holding your money for you. Um, try to avoid that at all costs. Take that $200, open up a money market account. It takes $1,000, depending on the bank, to open up a money market account have that $200 be put into your money market account every month. And then when you get the bill for uh, property taxes, uh, you already have the money because you've been saving your 200 bucks every month and then write your check and be done with it. Uh, also, I do the same thing personally for my car and house insurance. I uh, pay myself, because that's the first person you should be paying by the way, pay myself uh, every month to um, to save up for car and house insurance. And then when I get my bill for car and house insurance, I write my check and then I don't have to pay fees every month. Uh, I don't have to pay fees for paying for my car and house insurance every month. Cause by the way, if you pay every month for your car and house insurance, you're also paying fees. Uh, uh, so look into that by the way. But yeah, so property tax is an escrow. Be careful with escrow, uh, depending on your bank that you're through and your mortgage. You may not be able to avoid it, uh, but if you can, great. Speaking of not avoiding things, PMI, private mortgage insurance. Private mortgage insurance is, as it says, a fee to protect the lender if the lendee cannot make a payment. So earlier in the one problem where Atris was able to put down 25%, he's golden. He doesn't have to pay PMI. However, if you cannot pay, put down 20% of your loan amount, then you have to pay this PMI. I honestly do not know how much the PMI is. It's more of a hassle than anything. And the reason I'm saying that is because when you go to find a house, uh, you have to first get pre-approved, which means that a bank looks at your credit score to see if you're able to afford that house. And sidetrack, anytime anyone beside yourself looks at your credit score, your credit score drops. So if you went to two banks in the same day um, to get pre get a pre-approved loan, the first bank has a different score and a higher score than the second bank. And it takes a long time for that score to rebound. Um, and I don't know why. I think it's governed by magical wizards, which would just be redundant. Why don't they just call them wizards? I, don't know, I guess, well, there's muggles. Different story. 
Anywho, wait, no, those were the humans, weren't they? We'll discuss that in class. Anywho, so this private mortgage insurance is a fee you have to pay to a bank that you've already proven to them that you can afford the house, but it's just there in case you can't afford the house. That's literally what it's for. Again, jaw, pick it up. The best thing about it, and again, this is cynical, or this part's cynical, I should warn you, is that you pay this PMI until you've hit your 20%. The amazing part is you have to keep track of when you've hit your 20% and you have to call your bank to say, I've hit my 20%, stop charging me the PMI, because they won't tell you. So those little slips you get in the mail of how much more you have to pay, pay attention to that because um, you want to hit them with, all right, I'm done with my 20%. And as you saw in the, um, yeah, in this section, the, the payment breakdown, you know, you might be paying for 75 a month, but only 150 of it is going towards the principal. Um, oh, I'm sorry, no, what was it? You might be paying, what was it, 600? Yep, 625 a month, but only 150 of it is going to a principal. So that means it's gonna take a long time to hit 20% to pay off your PMI. Home ownership, you love it. All right, last up is hazard insurance. That's just fancy talk for home insurance. You gotta have it. Um, this also goes along as a comment for your car insurance. Uh, you should shop around because it's extremely easy to do nowadays, thanks to the internet. Thanks, El Gore. Uh, to shop around for home and car insurance. Try to bundle it if you can. And uh, the reason I'm saying, uh, uh, well, the reason I'm even bringing it up is because you should really be, this is just my opinion, not a professional. I would say like every three, four, five years, shop around. Because what I've noticed happening is you start very, very low and then it slowly starts to eke up your payments. Your payments get higher and higher. And then you start somewhere new and it does the same thing. So just a, a cost saving measure. I personally had this just happen. I was with, I don't know who I was with. It's gone. But then I switched to progressive and I'm sure like in five years when students are still using these videos because they're amazing, uh, that won't be a true statement anymore because I'll probably switch to a different company. So definitely shop around when you can. Uh, you might get the same deal or, uh, I'm sorry, the same insurance or better insurance as time goes on. Okay. Uh, so again, none of those terms you really have to worry about in terms of uh, them being on a test. However, they are words you're going to see when you actually go to buy a house, which I'm sure you are thrilled to go buy a house after this uh, chapter. But again, it's better to be informed than uh, uninformed. Speaking of that, I'm sorry, I'm babbling. I didn't even have coffee today. Um, when you go to buy a house or a car, bring your calculator with you and uh, um, use it to figure out what the payment's going to be before they tell you what the payment's gonna be. It throws them off a little bit. They don't like that that much. They don't want you to be informed at all. That's why they go say, oh, I'll go talk to my manager in the back. No, no, no. They don't need to talk to the manager in the back. They already know what the payment is. They already put it in their computer. And you can show them that you know what the payment is. Especially if they come back with a higher payment and be like, mm, that's not what I got. So um, yeah, fun fact. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Boop. Um, oh, okay, this is good. So this is a very, very basic general rule of thumb to where uh, if you know you can afford a house or not, because uh, as you may know, this housing crash that happened, banks were selling faulty loans, betting against the person buying the house because uh, they got more money that way. So they were selling houses to people that they, they knew could not afford them. So here's a couple things here. Feel free to pause the video if you need to to read them. But they're just things to consider before uh, taking the plunge. And then after that, we have a video called Knowing If Home Ownership Is Possible. It is a longer video. Um, and just as a comment, the last part is, again, one of those um, uh, watch it, don't worry too much about it. I won't have a question. 
on uh, the test concerning it, but it's all about, um, we're uh, talking about how much money would have been saved um, when the PMI is being removed. I'll be honest, I think I kept that in the video. So if that's not in the video, then oops, I'm sorry. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. All right, get to it. I lied. Don't go watch that video yet uh, because there's a formula you're gonna need for the next video and it's present value of annuity. Now, there's the, we already had the phrase present value that was in 1.2 and that's when you only had one payment. That was it. Um, present value of an annuity is when you have multiple payments. The thing they have in common is that in a present value, you put away a lump sum in the beginning. That's it. That's all they have in common. Present value normal is in the future you take the money out once. Present value of an annuity is after that lump sum you take pieces out as time goes on. So for instance, if you hit the lottery, Mazel tov, and you did the lump sum from the, uh, from the lottery, and then you decided to say, I'm gonna take out $5,000 every year, year, then that um, present value, that lump sum, I'm sorry, the lump sum is the present value, and the payment that you're seeing in this formula is what you're taking out for yourself every year, or however you're taking out money. So the present value of an annuity PV, where the payment PMT is made in the annual interest rate R compounded n times per year for t years is given by boop. So again, this formula tells you the lump sum necessary to be able to take out PMT dollars every month, year, week, depending on uh, how it's being compounded for t years.